Praise the Lord. Good afternoon po or good evening everybody. Welcome to our real talk today. I am excited to once again come live and um, sharing the goodness of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you Jesus for the opportunity to serve our Lord. We are servants and it is our honor to share his power his reality to many people amen so thank you for joining me sister adelina god bless you thank you for joining me today i am just like a little bit um yes thank you lord you know i have to organize this um machine because um this because we have you know this for zoom i need to just uh, not zoom this facebook i have to angle it it just give me a little bit of uh, uh trouble but thank god thank you my mom is joining me thank you hello mother dear and then my dear sister teresa thank you for joining me today and for many of you that are ready to hear the word of the lord i'm just excited that you are here with me it's an exciting thing that we are going to be discussing the benefits of fearing the lord last week we talked about it i was at the cupboard beach and we discussed about the fear of the lord some of the benefits and the importance of it today there is a wonderful benefits when we continually honor god revere god respect him humble ourselves before him wonderful benefits that the lord has in place and is stored for those people who will do that amen <coughs> actually there is 11 there's 100 benefits but i will be tackling 50 benefits for this time oh my dear sister-in-law Gemma. Thank you for sharing and joining me today. Hallelujah. The people of God are ready to hear the word of the Lord. Amen. So, you know, um, <coughs> I'm just getting my notes ready here. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Okay, so let us open up in prayer. Father, I thank you, Lord, for my brothers and sister, Lord, that are ready to worship you, O oh God. Your people, Lord, have just prepared themselves, O oh God, and they just want to be strengthened once again by your holy words. Your words, O oh God, is like a hammer. It has the power to break things into pieces. Dear Jesus, I welcome you to speak to us, Lord. I welcome you to open our heart, our mind, our soul, and above all, to touch our heart in a personal way. Dear Jesus, it is our prayer that you will give us a pure heart, a heart of flesh, and a heart that will humble. And truly, Lord God, help us, give us a pure heart. A heart that will follow you. Dear God, we are ready to worship you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So my brethren, why don't we sing this quickly, this song, God is so good. I know you know this song, so let us sing it. Amen. And Rio, all right, sister, thank you very much for joining me. And Sister Fab, oh, we miss you and we love you. And thank you for joining uh, me tonight. We're going to study the 50, I will try my very best to go through it, 50 benefits of fearing the Lord. Get excited because we will be blessed with his wonderful message let us quickly sing this song god you're so good come on sing it wherever you're watching it god is so good god is so good god is so good he is so good to me come on let's sing it God is so good. 
God is so good. God is so good. He is so good to me. He answered prayer. God answers prayer. God answers prayer. God answers prayers. He's so good to me. God is so good. God is so good. God, you're so good. You're so good to me. Amen. So, the title of the message is The Fear of the Lord. My brethren, oh, my Ati Flora, thank you for joining me today. Thank you, Jesus, all the way down from the Philippines. Oh, how much we love our nation, Philippines. God, thank you for blessing our nation. So, thank you, Ati Flora, for joining me today. My brethren, all of us, are going through different situations in life wonderful jesus he said into his word that he is our healer do you know when we continually fear the lord fearing the lord brings healing to our body yes my brethren fearing the lord it will bring healing to our body we will talk more about it and it's just so wonderful like you know to to truly truly see the benefits of fearing the lord let me now quickly discuss this thank you jesus thank you lord actually let me just um read this quotation here how the fear of the lord brings healing into our body First, the fear of the Lord is showing to God our reverence, our respect, our honor unto Him. Fearing the Lord is we are just submitting ourselves to God and saying, God, let your will be done. Fearing the Lord is also a sign of humility. We are saying, God, I don't know it all, but you know it all. So that's why I am submitting my will to you. Another part of fearing the Lord, my brethren, is ready to obey His word. You know, a great example here is Abraham. We know that Abraham is the father of faith. He demonstrated how he feared the Lord. When our God given him a commandment, after waiting for many, many years to become a father, he wants to become a biological dad, to have a son, right? And then the Lord promised him that I will give you a son and I will make you a father of many, many nations and many, many people. So Abraham waited for so long time, but we know what God promised, he will fulfill it in his own timing. Abraham was old already, and then he has the son, and we know his son named Isaac. When Isaac was about 12 or 13 years old, the, this son that Abraham loved so much, this son that is a promise from God, this son that is just like a miracle child, the Lord had commanded now Abraham to sacrifice this son. This, it means, you know, kill his own son and then burn it and let the smoke of it will ascend up to heaven as a form of worship. That is what they have done in the Old Testament in doing a sacrifice or worship to God. We know that the practices in the Old Testament is just symbolically will prophesy and it will just direct 
and point to what the Lord Jesus Christ will do on saving humanity. We know that our Lord Jesus Christ sacrificed himself because of his sacrifice himself to pay the penalty of our sin. It become a worship and that's the reason why we can enter into the kingdom of God. My brethren, our God is not a murderer. Our God is an covenant-making God. So Abraham, because he feared God and he fully had this faith that God, I love you and because I honor you and because I fear you, your commandment, right? Your words is my command. So right away, you know, Abraham did not, what? Did not resist it, did not reason out what God has commanded him to do in sacrificing his own son. We know early morning they traveled. And when he is about to stab his own son, to struck his own son, you know that the Lord said, Abraham, stop it. Now I know that you love me. Now I know that you fear me. So my brethren, when we fear the Lord, there is a wonderful benefit. Because of that, you have seen the nation of Israel was established. It is because of Abraham, because of God's covenant to Abraham. So you can always trust God and can just say, God, even though I don't understand what you are commanding or asking me to do, I will put my trust in you because I love you and I fear you. So reverential fear, my brethren, is, is a sign that we truly honor the Lord by putting into action our confession and the attitude and the motive of our hearts. Amen? Praise God. So when we do that, when we fear God, things will go well for us. Isn't it true? When we fear the Lord, there are beautiful benefits and things will go well for us. And we will enjoy living in this world. Yes, our journey may be 100 years, maybe 90 years. Maybe 80 years. That's why the scripture said, you know, there's a limit to our life in this world. Lord, help us to count our days that we may walk in wisdom. The, the psalmist said, David said, Lord, help me to count my days. It means, Lord, help me to always remember that my life in this world is short. And because I am reminded that my life here in this short, then help me to walk in wisdom. When we fear the Lord, my brethren, we walk in wisdom. And because we walk in wisdom and we fear God, honor God, obey His word, humble ourselves before Him, God is pleased and in return, we will enjoy the wonderful benefits of our decision. Are you ready now? Praise God. So the first, we will discuss the first 50 benefits of fearing the Lord. I will try it because there is a hundred benefits. So I will try my very best to go for the first 50. If not, I will stop and then we will move on for next week. Amen. All right. So the first benefits of fearing the Lord is this. Fearing the Lord, it will bring wisdom. For the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. I hope you will take notes. Fear the Lord and wisdom will come upon you. Proverbs chapter 15 verse 33. Thank you, Jesus. Proverbs chapter 15, I know you want to walk in wisdom. What is wisdom? You are fully aware of it. It is a practical application of knowledge. A clarity to make a wise decision. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. It is an insight 
that comes from above. Thank you, Jesus. So, Proverbs chapter 15, verse 33, it says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, or it is the instruction of wisdom. And before honor is humility. Isn't that a beautiful scriptures, my brethren? Proverbs chapter 15, verse 33. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. See, we, we admire people that are wise. We look up to them. But it is simply the application of the knowledge of the information that we had. What does that mean? It's simply obeying it. It's simply acting on the knowledge and on the information that we already know, right? And it is so wonderful. And before honor is humility. My brethren, isn't it wonderful scriptures that we want to be honored, we want to be recognized? Then the word of God said, let us walk in humility. Amen? So can you say it with me? The fear of the Lord, wherever you are, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Or the fear of the Lord is the instruction of wisdom. And before honor is humility. Thank you, Lord Jesus. So the first benefits of fearing the Lord, you will receive wisdom. The second benefits of fearing the Lord, it is the beginning of knowledge. Thank you, Lord, the beginning of knowledge. Proverbs chapter 1, verse 7. Wow, I could not just resist the scriptures. Proverbs chapter 1, verse 7. It's just so beautiful to read the scriptures. Amen. The fear of the Lord it's the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. You see, the foolish people, they despise or it means they doesn't like instruction or knowledge. Amen? So we are not that group of people, thank you Jesus, but rather we choose to observe and obey the word of God. So... Fearing the Lord, my brethren, first, it is the beginning or the instruction of wisdom. Second, fearing God is the beginning of knowledge. The third benefit is fearing the Lord. It is a deliverance from your enemies. Deliverance from your enemies. The scriptures that says here is in Exodus, right? They are gone through a lot of trouble, but those people that fear the Lord, God has delivered them. Fourth benefit of fearing the Lord, it will be dwelling in safe, safety and not being oppressed anymore. Just imagine that. Wonderful, wonderful. Fourth benefit is you will dwell in safety and you will not be oppressed anymore. The fifth benefit, fearing the Lord, the land will yield increase and you will eat its fruits or you will be filled. Fifth benefit, fearing the Lord, the land will yield its benefits and you will eat it's filled. The six benefits, my brethren, fearing the Lord, you will live upon the earth and teach your children and grandchildren. This is taken in Deuteronomy. The Lord has commanded his people after he delivered them from the enemies, from the Egyptian, from the, from the Egyptian, you know, under Pharaoh's rulership. God is commanding his people to teach your children to fear God. To remember all of the wonderful things and the miracle that the Lord has demonstrated before them. My brethren, each one of us always has to count our blessing. 
like you know always refresh your memories how God has saved us how the Lord have rescued us how the Lord have answered our prayer that is part of us being blessed and being happy amen count your blessing and name them one by one the Holy Spirit will put into your remembrance every good things all the benefits that the Lord has given to us and you know when we have that attitude you are showing to God Lord I don't take for granted things that you have done for me it's just showing humility that God I thank you for the past victory and I am excited for many victories that you will be bringing into my life amen so fearing the Lord that is you will teach your children and your grandchildren to also live for God. The seventh benefit of fearing the Lord is that you will be well and your children forever. Beautiful. Eight benefits is a preservation of life. God will continually preserve our life. Amen. That is taken in Deuteronomy. Fearing the Lord, you will be declared righteous. Thank you, Jesus. Let me just read these scriptures. In Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 24 and also 25. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 24 and 25. This is the word of the Lord. And the Lord commanded us to observe all these statutes. See, this is a command of the Lord. To fear the Lord our God. Okay? So this is the time when the people were set free under Pharaoh's leadership. Okay? So I will read in verse 23. And this is the, the commandments of the Lord to his people. Then he brought us out from there that he might bring us and give us the land which he swore to our father, which is the promised land. And the Lord commanded us to observe all of these statutes, which means all of his commandments. To fear the Lord our God for our good, for our good always. And he might preserve us alive. So when we fear God, it is always for our benefits. Amen. So that he might preserve our life, that he might preserve us alive as it is this day. Then it will be righteousness for us if we carefully to observe all of these commandments before the Lord our God as he has commanded us. Amen. So the ninth benefits of fearing the Lord, we will be declared righteous. The tenth benefit is you will enter into your own promised land. My brethren, we all have a promised land. And that is a land that is a state of mind where you will have peace, where you will have contentment, where you will have joy in the midst of adversity. In the midst of many challenges, our promised land is we are so rest assured that our God will take care of us. Whether we live, it's just like what Paul said, whether I live in this body, it is more beneficial for the people, for, his, for the follower of Jesus. But for me, to live is Christ and to die is gain. Isn't it a wonderful life, my brethren? While I am living in this world, I will live, I'll talk to people about the goodness of God. But if I will die, it is more benefit because I will be with Him forever and ever. Amen. So the tenth benefits of fearing the Lord, you will enter into your own promised land. Eleventh, fearing the Lord, God will do great and awesome things for you. Thank you, Jesus. I will read it taken from Deuteronomy chapter 10, verse 20 and 21. Thank you, Lord. 
As at the first time I stayed in the mountain forty days and forty nights, the Lord also heard me at that time, and the Lord chose not to destroy you. Then the Lord said to me, Arise, begin your journey before the people, that they may go in and possess the land which I swore to their father's father. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And then in verse 20 to 21, You shall fear the Lord your God, and you shall serve him, and him, and you shall hold fast and take an oath to his name. He is your praise, and he is your God, who has done for you this great and awesome things, which your eyes have seen. Again, the people, the Israelites has reminded, being reminded, just imagine, God has set them free from the captivity of Pharaoh under the Egyptian empire. God has opened the sea for them. The clouds, the clouds at night, there's a pillar of fire, I should say. At night, there's a pillar of fire that stands there while they are sleeping because you know in the desert it's so dark and there is the pillar of fire that serve as a light for them on top of the moon and the stars that guided them and then at night and during daytime i should say there's a cloud so that they can journey they can walk in the desert and they doesn't get burned. My brethren, the Lord has been faithfully helped them, even for us. You know, day in and day out, there are so much benefits and miracles that the Lord has given to us. Amen. Just imagine the people of Israelites in the morning when they wake up. Aside from, you know, they, they see there's a fresh baked manna from heaven, right? Isn't that beautiful? God has shown so many wonderful benefits to them. Even to our daytime, to our t present time, I should say, God has been providing everything that we need. Amen. So the commandment of the Lord, He is your praise and He is your God who has done for you these great and awesome things which your eyes have seen. Your fathers went down to Egypt with 70 persons. And now the Lord your God has made you as the stars of heaven in multitude. It means they grow, they prosper. Amen and amen. So fearing God will do great things for you. 12 benefits Fearing God, it will prevent one from thinking that they are better than others. Isn't it good? Because with us, you know, human, we love ourselves too much that we think too much of ourselves. But when we fear the Lord, it will prevent us from thinking that we are better than anyone else. Amen. Thirteenth benefits, my brethren, fearing the Lord is preventing us from turning aside from God's uh, commandments. Amen. Fearing the Lord, it will prevent us. It means it will hold us. It will stop us in sinning against God. Amen. When we always consider, oh, I honor the Lord. I respect God. I humble myself before God. Then when we are in that state of mind, even though there's many temptations that come our way, we choose to think God first and then we are able to resist it. Thank you, Jesus. Fourteenth benefits when we fear the Lord, it is a prevention of sickness and plague to come near us. Isn't it good? We don't want sickness to come to us. We don't want any calamity or any kind of disaster or plague to come near us. So let us continually honor, revere, and fear 
the Lord. Let me read it in Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 56 to 61. I hope you are enjoying this as much as I am also enjoying this Bible scriptures. Amen. Bible study. Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 58 to 61. This is what the word of God says. If you do not carefully observe, so these people are the one that this will disobey God. So the scripture said, if you will not obey the scriptures, if you do not carefully obey all the words of the law that are written in this book, that you may fear the glorious and awesome name, the Lord your God, then the Lord will bring upon you and your descendants extraordinary plague, great and prolonged plague, and serious and prolonged sickness. Wow! Moreover, he will bring back on you all the diseases of Egypt of which you were afraid, and they shall cling to you. Also every sickness and every plague which is not written in the book of the law, will the Lord bring upon you until you are destroyed. It made it in that word. My brethren, the reason why it is scriptures is this. God is saying to us, there is a universal law, my brethren, of sowing and reaping. I've been saying this in every disobedience that we perform or do in our life. Any kinds of disobedience to the word of God, to the commandment of God, there is a negative consequences to it. It means there's a negative result unto it. That is a universal law. But in every benefit, in every I would say obedience that we observe, then automatically the blessing will follow. So the Lord is very fair to each one of us, my brethren. God doesn't want to curse us. The Lord does not want us to have sickness. The Lord does not want us to experience calamity or disaster. That's the reason why He is giving us a preventive measures before we will make a wrong decision right so isn't it true that we always said that this that prevention is a good medication it's just like a policeman he does not want to give you a ticket when you are driving in 401 that's why they set a limit there of driving 100 or 120 but if you will drive up to 150 then you are not giving the what the policeman any other alternatives or option except to give you a ticket because you violated the law of the traffic right the law of the land my brethren there is a universal law that just happening around us just imagine if the solar system is not governed by this universal law of order it will just like go all over the place, right? And it will maybe consume our planet Earth. Are you getting it? You know, if the Lord will not allow the season to be in its proper order, that during summertime it will be prolonged, there will be a heat. During winter time, you know, the night will be longer. You know, there is a purpose why God has allowed that to happen for the orderliness of his creation. So the gravity, just think of it. If there is no law of gravity in this planet Earth, it's just like we are just like all floating and there will be no order in the land. Are we getting it? So everything that God has commanded, there are principles, there are, you, there are laws that even God himself, even though he placed it there, he himself follow it. 
But there are times, that's why we called supernatural, supernatural move of God, that there are some occasion where God will supersede the universal law and the universal principle that is happening around us. Amen. But overall, the Lord has set all of these laws and all of these principles designed when we obey it, they were designed to prosper us and to bring a good success to each one of us. Amen. Always remember, in every blessing, there is an obedience that we have done we obey that's why we get blessed in every disobedience there's a negative consequences so the lord is saying to his own people that if you will not follow the law and the commandment that is written get ready you are the one that is bringing a negative result or a curse upon your own life amen Wow, I really want to finish this up, but let me see. Okay, so fearing the Lord is the prevention of sickness and plague. 15, fearing the Lord, it will bring, you know, it will bring healing and diseases and sickness. Fearing the Lord, my brethren, you will live in a divine health. Who? Oh, thank you, Jesus. Proverbs chapter 3. Thank you, Lord. You know what? When we put the word of God as a final authority over our life, you will enjoy our life. You will just say, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I will do it, Lord. And life will be so exciting. Life will be so wonderful. And you will just enjoy every minute of our life. Proverbs chapter 3, my brethren, verse 7 and 8. Beautiful benefits of fearing the Lord. This is... 16th benefits amen god is saying trust in the lord in verse 5 trust in the lord with all your heart and lean not in your own understanding in all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your path verse 7 do not be wise in your own eyes fear the lord and depart from evil it will be help to your flesh and strength to your bones can you recite it with me my brethren beautiful beautiful scriptures verse proverbs chapter 3 verse 7 and 8 amen proverbs chapter 3 verse 7 and 8 it says do not be wise in your own eyes can you say it with me do not be wise in your own wise, in your own opinion, but rather fear the Lord and depart from evil. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. Verse 8, it will be help to your flesh and strength to your bones. We want to walk in divine healing. We want a good health, right? We want to be even when in our golden years, you know, I am 57 years old. Some of you are older than me. You want to become strong even though you are maybe in your 70s, in your 60s, in your 80s. But it's still people will say, wow, you look young. Wow, you're strong. Wow, you look good. Thank you, Jesus. You know, the secret of having that wonderful divine help is fearing the Lord. Let me read it to you again. Proverbs chapter 3 verse 7 and 8. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. It means stop it. Like you know, you know what is wrong. You can hear the voice of the Holy Spirit. He lives inside of you. So just listen to him. Amen. Depart from evil. When you do that, it will be help to your flesh and strength to your bones. Thank you, Lord. Amen. So that is the 16th benefits of fearing the Lord. 17th benefits, your offspring, your children, 
and your next generation, your the next descendants, right? They will also be inspired to fear God. Amen. The eighth ben the eighteenth benefits fearing the Lord, God will hear our affliction. God will hear our affliction. Amen. The nineteenth benefit fearing the Lord. God will hear your cry and he will save you and preserve you. Let me read it. I read this scripture this morning in Psalm 145. Thank you, Jesus. Psalm 145. It's beautiful. I am strongly encouraging you, my brethren. You know, when you wake up in the morning, stand up. To say thank you, Jesus. You know, when you want to read, read the scripture, Psalm 145. Or you can read Psalm 103. It says, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Amen. Read it. And when you're reading it, read it out loud. Amen. You will say, you will see a beautiful benefits when you do that. See, Psalm 145, verse 19. Thank you, Lord. Verse 18, I'm going to read it. The Lord is near to all who call upon Him. To all who call upon Him in truth. 19, He will fulfill the desire of those who fear Him. He will also hear their cry and save them. Isn't that good? So the 19th benefits of fearing the Lord, the Lord will hear your cry and he will preserve you. Again, he will fulfill the desire of those who fear him. He will also hear their cry. Thank you, Jesus. The 20th benefits when we fear the Lord. I'm sorry about this. The twentieth benefits when we fear the Lord is this. God will fulfill the desires of your heart. For those people that fear Him, it says here in verse 20. Fearing the Lord. Yes. Fearing the Lord, God will fulfill the desires of those who fear Him. And then the 21, and then the 20 benefits is he will hear. The 19th benefits is he will hear your cry and he will save your soul, right? And then the 20th benefits is he will, fearing the Lord, he will fulfill the desires of those who fear him. Thank you, Jesus. The 21 benefits of the Lord, of Fearing the Lord is this taken in Psalm 33, verse 18. For whatever reason, our dog is barking. I'm sorry, I'm getting distracted. Please accept my apology. Maybe he's seeing something in our backyard and he just wants to go there. So Psalm 33, verse 18, my brethren. Behold, the eyes of the Lord is on those who fear Him and on those who, hate, who hope in His mercy. Thank you, Jesus. My, door is not, my, my dog is knocking, so let me just open the door. Okay, just one second. Lee, come. Leo, why are you mad? So this is my dog, Leo, and he is so cute, but sometimes he's so annoying. So just, I'm sorry about that. Thank you, Lord. Okay, so the number, the number 20, for 21 benefits of fearing the Lord, the eyes of the Lord is upon us. Amen. So let me read it. That is taken in Psalm 33, verse 18. Behold, 
The eyes of the Lord is on those who fear Him, on those whose hope is in His mercy, to deliver their soul from death and to keep them alive in famine. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. To deliver their soul from death, which is the eternal separation. We are talking about here the eternal separation from God and to keep them alive in famine. Isn't it like even though there is like what they call recession or economic stress, we are not afraid because we fear the Lord. We know that God will help us. Amen. So, that is the 21st benefits. Now, the 22nd benefits, the 22th benefits, the friendship of Jehovah is with them that fear Him. The friendship of the Lord is upon us. The 23rd benefits, fearing the Lord, God makes His covenant known to those who fear Him. The 24th, Fearing the Lord, God will release your feet from the snare of the enemy. 25th, fearing the Lord, the Lord will instruct us and give us His clear direction. The 26th benefits, fearing God, God's great goodness is laid up for those who fear Him. I love these scriptures that is taken in Psalm 31, verse 19. Psalm 31, verse 19. Thank you, Jesus. This is a beautiful, beautiful, let me just read it. Yes. Look at this, my brethren, read it, write down these scriptures, it will truly encourage you. Psalm 31 verse 19, Oh, how great is your goodness, which you have laid up for those who fear you, which you have prepared for those who trust in you in the presence of the sons of men. This is the psalmist David and he is ascribing it to the Lord because he experienced it. So David is saying, O Lord, how great is your goodness which you have laid up for those who fear you. So for those people that fear the Lord, get ready because there are blessings that are prepared and ready to be poured out upon you which you have prepared to those who put their trust in you and in the presence of the sons of men. See, we are living in this society and people will know that if we truly fear God. So God will make known before the society and before your, you know, with humanity that He is a God of blessing. That he has so much good things stored and prepared for those people that fear him. Amen. All right. The 27th benefits of fearing the Lord. God will hide you in the shelter of his presence and from the plot of the enemy. It means when you continually fear God. He will hide you in your in His presence. It means He will continually cover you with His presence. Amen. And of course, He will send His angel to be guarding you. 28. Fearing God. God will keep you safe in His pavilion. Amen. And from the accusing tongues. 29. The fearing of the Lord, the secret will be revealed to those who fear God. God will confide to those that fear Him. Thank you, Jesus. Do you have a scripture for that? Thank you, Lord. Let me just read it in Psalm 25, verse 14. Psalm, verse 25, Psalm chapter 25, verse 14. The secret of the Lord is with those who fear Him 
and he will show them his covenant. My brethren, it is in the scriptures. Thank you, Jesus. Can you imagine that? God will confide to you when you fear him. Can you imagine that? Just, just imagine this. It's so wonderful. Thank you, Lord. See, let me just read it in verse in, in verse uh, 12, actually. Psalm 25, verse 12, up to verse 14. Allow me to read it. Who is a man that fears the Lord? Him shall he teach in his way that he chooses. He himself shall dwell in prosperity, and his descendants shall inherit the earth. Look at that, my brethren. When you fear the Lord, he will teach you in your way, and he himself shall dwell in prosperity. And not only you will enjoy it, it says here, and his descendants will inherit the earth. The secret of the Lord is with those who fear him, and he will show them his covenant. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. That's the reason why it is wonderful to honor him, submit our will before him, respect him, and be ready to follow his commandments. I think I'm going to stop here at the 30th benefits. Fearing the Lord, he will deliver you from death. What is this death? Death which is eternal separation from God. Yes, we might die in our physical death that is only you know physical but the real us our spirit that is living inside of us is so alive and it will be with him forever but if we don't fear god if we don't humble ourselves before him then there is an eternal separation from our living and loving god and we don't want that to happen amen so we will stop here now, my brethren, and I hope that you take some note and I hope that you will truly, seriously consider, I will humble myself before God. I will honor Him because I know it is for my benefits to walk in the fear of the Lord. Always remember, the fear of the Lord will bring help. The fear of the Lord will add knowledge to us. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. The fear of the Lord is a preservation of health. The fear of the Lord is for our protection. Amen. Can we lift our hands up and say, God, thank you. Thank you, Lord, for being with us. Thank you, Lord, for teaching us today. We worship you, Lord. We worship you in the beauty of your holiness. My brethren, I hope that you learned something tonight. Amen. So now is the time where we can pray. I know it's very important that we spend time in prayer, even for a few minutes, especially praying for our family, for our loved ones, and above all, for many people, to come to know the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, we cannot be in Europe. We cannot be in Ukraine. We cannot be in Middle East. But our prayer, when we, you know, our prayer, when we utter it, it goes towards them and it will bring glory to God and God will hear us. You know, when we get to heaven, my brethren, those people that we will not meet in our lifetime here, we will meet them in heaven. And they will say, thank you for praying. Thank you for sharing. Because of your prayer, I am here. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Let us pray. God, I worship you. Lord, my brothers and sisters are here, oh God. They just, Lord, hear your words. And they are ready, Lord, to present the re heart request and the petition before you. You send an invitation, King Jesus. Come unto me, all of you that are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. For my yoke is easy 
and my burden is light. Lord, you also extend an invitation saying we can come boldly into the throne of grace and from there we will find mercy. So that's why, Lord, we come to you now and we pray, Lord, that we are casting all of our cares, all of our concern, all of our worries, all of the things, oh God, that bothers us. We are laying it unto your feet, King Jesus. And we are asking you, King Jesus, to take care of it. Lord, we are submitting all of our shortcomings, all of our sins before you and asking you to forgive us, Lord, and give us the strength to do what is right into your side. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your mercy. Thank you, Lord, for your goodness. Thank you, Lord, for your help. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Right now, King Jesus, we are coming to you, Lord, presenting to you our family. Dear Jesus, thank you, Lord, for our family. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for our family that we love so much. Dear Lord, you know our family, O oh God. Many of them doesn't know you. Many of our loved ones, O oh God, doesn't have a relationship with you. So we pray, Lord Jesus, that you will minister to them in a special and real way. Lord Jesus, we are asking you, Lord, to touch their heart, to touch their mind, and to touch their soul. Lord, we love our family. We love our children. We love our nieces. We love our cousins. We love them, O oh God, and you put them into our life. So, Lord, we cannot make them to follow us. We cannot make them to love you. But, dear God in heaven, we are interceding on their behalf, asking you, Lord, to touch their heart in a special way. King Jesus, we are asking you, Lord, to minister to them in a special way. We are asking you, Lord, to protect them. We are asking you, Lord God, to expose the lies of the enemy upon their mind. We are asking you, Lord, to save their soul from a sure destruction. We are asking you, Lord, to set them free from the captives and from the stronghold of the enemy in the name of Jesus. Lord, have mercy upon their soul. Have mercy upon them, O oh God. Have mercy, Lord Jesus. Lord, have mercy upon our family. Save them, King Jesus. We don't want them, Lord, to be fooled by the devil and the carrying this heavy burden. We want you, Lord, to minister to them in a special way. God, we pray that death will not fall upon them. But rather, Lord, even before you will take them, Lord, that they will be in their knees. They will be into their knees and recognize the need of a Savior. We welcome you, Lord, to minister to them in a special way, in a real, strong, and personal way. We welcome you, Lord, to visit them in their dreams. We welcome you, Lord, to minister to them. Send forth your holy angels, O God. Send forth your servant to get them, O Lord, and to minister to them. Thank you, Jesus. We entrust them into your loving hands. Dear Jesus, I thank you for saving our family, for saving our relatives, for saving our friends, for saving our acquaintances, for bringing salvation to humanity using us in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Father, we plead your precious blood, your healing, O oh God, to flow into their hearts and mind and soul in the name of Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Dear Jesus, we present to you now, O oh God, your people all around the world. Lord, we are so thankful that we are, we are part of your holy body. 
Lord, that there are many of our brothers and sisters that are in Thailand, that are in North Korea, that are in South Korea, are in Europe, oh Lord. They are in Middle East. They are in all corners of the world. God, those people that are calling upon you, Lord Jesus, they become my brothers and sisters. So we are praying, Lord, that you will use each one of them, O oh God, in a special way. Strengthen your people, O oh God. Strengthen your church. Strengthen your disciples, your people, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. Help us, Lord, to continually be inspired, O oh God. To always, O oh God, have this burning desire, Lord, to serve you, to honor you, to please you, and to declare and to share to many people about the good news of salvation. Dear Jesus, Lord, sweep a real and genuine revival around the world in the name of Jesus. We remember your people, your leaders, Lord, that you have called into the ministry. Lord, those pastors, those missionaries, those Bible teachers, oh God. Dear Jesus, those evangelists, those apostles. Dear Jesus, may you, oh God, strengthen their faith. Whatever kinds of tribulation, whatever kinds of problem, Lord, whatever kinds of persecution, O oh God, that they are facing, any kinds of discouragement, O oh God, or any kinds of doubt, O oh Lord, that Satan have thrown into their mind. Dear Jesus, we are lifting them up to you right now for help. We are, O oh God, asking you to strengthen your pastors, your leaders, your people, the believers, and the body of Christ. Yes, Lord. Yes, God. Provide everything that we need in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God, for your help. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Now, after we prayed for our biological family, our friends, after we prayed for our for the body of Christ, our spiritual family, now we're going to pray for those people that doesn't know God. There are many of them, you know, some even those rich people, my brethren, those people, God wants to save them. Lord Jesus, we lift up to you those people, oh God, that are scientists. Lord Jesus, those that are in technology. Those billionaires, oh God, in the business area. Those athletes, oh Lord. Those celebrities, oh God. Dear Jesus, those politicians, Lord, in all different corners of the law. Of the law. Those judges, those lawyers, oh God. Dear God in heaven, those medical doctors, Lord Jesus. Those astronauts, oh Lord. God, you love them. And you desire to save them. So we pray, Father, whatever kind of influence that they have, that they will experience the saving grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. We pray, Lord, that there will be a great revival in those areas and among those people, O oh God. And you will cause them to use their influence to declare your power and reality. Yes, Lord, use these celebrities, use this strong influencer in the social media. Bring them, let them experience, oh God, your supernatural touch. And let them become a mouthpiece of salvation in the name of Jesus. God, thank you because you are raising up among them, oh Lord. You're raising up your people among them. Lord, you said in these last days there will be a great revival that will sweep this world. Let it be, oh God. Let the media, let the social media, Lord, let all of this modern invention, oh God, be used for the propagation of the gospel and save those people, oh God. Save them, O oh Lord. We plead the blood of Jesus. We plead the divine intervention. In Jesus' name, a divine encounter among those group of people in the name of Jesus. 
Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. We will be seeing it in the news. This great influencer are encountering Jesus because Jesus hears and answers our prayers. Thank you, God. And now, Lord, we remember those people that seems outcast in the society. But God, you love them so much. That's the reason you died on the cross. You died for humanity. There is no rich and poor to you. So that's why right now we remember those children in the orphanage. Dear God, their heart, oh God, they are crying at the young age, oh Lord. They doesn't know who they are. God, those children in the orphanage, that some of them are being abused, oh Lord. Children that are getting abused. Dear Jesus, we pray that you will minister to them in a special and real way. Reveal yourself to them, oh God, in Jesus' name. Remember the children, Lord. Remember the children, oh God, in Jesus' name. Dear Jesus, we remember those elderly, oh Lord, in the nursing home. Lord, those that have been forsaken and forgotten by their families. We pray, God, that you will minister to them, even at the end state of their life. Save them, O oh God, and give them purpose. Reveal yourself to them, O oh God, to these seniors, O oh Lord, in the name of Jesus. We pray for many people that are in the hospital, that are struggling for their life, O oh God. O oh God, we pray that you will visit them and reveal your healing power upon them and save them and use them, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. People that are in the mental institutions, people that are behind bars, people that are in the destitute situation. Yes, Lord, those inmates, oh God, people that are bound with many drug addictions, different kinds of addiction, oh God, even pornography, oh Lord. Oh God, those people that are member of the gangs, oh Lord. Those people, oh Lord, that are selling their body, oh Lord, for the gain of money. Dear Jesus, because of many vices, because of many things, Lord, God, have mercy upon their soul. Save them, O oh God. Save them, King Jesus, we pray. Those street people, O oh God, that seems hopeless, save them, O oh Lord. Save them, O oh God. Give purpose and hope to them, Lord, in the name of Jesus. God, there's so many of them. We don't want to ignore them, Lord, for whatever reason they are in that state. So we just pray, Father, that you will minister to them. They are in so many, Lord. God, minister to them, Lord, in the name of Jesus. And God, I thank you for your people, oh God, that you have raised up, that you have raised up, oh God, to specifically disciple and touch the heart of these people. Give them grace and provide their needs in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for your help. Thank you, Lord. God, we pray for us as a local church and all the local churches that you establish. Let there be your healing power. Dear Jesus, help us and help every local churches, Lord, to continually preach the wholeness of your holy word. God, that there will be no compromise, but the wholeness of the gospel let there be holiness among us O oh lord we know we are not perfect but god help us lord to set up an example to the next generation we pray for local churches you will strengthen them O oh god strengthen every local churches lord people that are struggling O oh god your pastors Help them, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. Lord Jesus, we dedicate the next generation unto you. Our children, our youth, O oh God. We pray, Lord, that you will shield them with your fire. 
We pray, Lord, whatever the devil is trying to do to snatch them away from you, we are taking authority over it in the name of Jesus. The next generation will experience the power of the living God. They will become strong and mighty because the people that knows their God, they shall become strong and mighty and do a great exploit. We speak blessing upon our children. We speak blessing upon many young professionals. This next generation shall become more stronger and more powerful, declaring the greatness of Jesus. Thank you, God, that this next generation are leaders, leaders of righteousness, leaders of holiness, leaders to in walking in humility, leaders conducting themselves in purity. Thank you, Lord, that you are ministering to them in a special way. God, you raise up Daniels in the midst of a perverse generation. You make him as a mighty leader. You raise up Joseph, oh God, in the midst of many adversity. So we bless this next generation. We bless them and we dedicate them unto you, oh God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Oh, we worship you. We worship you, King Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for your goodness. Thank you, Lord, for Skyway family. Thank you, Lord, for your people at the Skyway, oh God. Be with them, Lord. Continually use Skyway, Lord, to share your goodness. Use us in many different ways, oh God, we pray. Thank you, Lord, for this day. Thank you, God, for my brothers and sisters that have joined me today and stood by, Lord, to intercede. Bless them, O God, and whatever things that they are going through, Lord, we know you will carry us through. Because with you, with you, God, we know nothing is too hard, nothing is difficult. All things is possible when we believe. That's why, God, we just submit to you our future plans, our future goals, and everything, and let your will be done. Thank you, Lord, for this time. In Jesus' holy, wonderful, magnificent name, we pray. Amen and amen. My brothers and sisters, I have to say goodbye, but once again, Thank you for joining me and stood by with me tonight. The next time, I'm going to be doing my recording in Cuba. Praise the Lord. And it will be, what? A good discussion regarding continuation of fearing the Lord. So, stood by. Amen. Yes, Pastor Jim and I will not be in the church this coming Sunday. The Lord Jesus will be there. So we don't worry about it. Amen. The most important is Jesus is in our midst. And Jesus is the one that we worship and adore. God bless and have a wonderful, wonderful evening. Take care. Bye-bye.